everybody, and welcome to another edition of Lewis and Avery, a little chat that we're trying to do every Monday so that we can kind of get a, a new take on uh, the sermon that we just heard yesterday. And yesterday was a big one. It was our Easter service, right, Avery? So, yep. so tell me, first of all, how did you enjoy the Easter activities after the service? It was really fun, but I didn't do the Easter hunt. You didn't do the, the egg hunt? Yeah, but the slide was still better. At least I had fun. Yeah, I know. I saw you on the slide. And I did a flip. You were yelling so at everyone and saying that it was a lot of fun, right? I heard you. Yeah. And you're thinking why I'm wearing my jersey, because I have the games tonight. It's, the game starts at 6.30, but batting practice, like, I don't know. Yeah. So as you can see, he's, he's ready to go for his baseball game tonight. Soon. Uh-huh. But, uh... Tell us a little bit about that. How's your record going? You know, have you hit any home runs? I'm ne I'm never actually hit a home run, but I've no. seen someone hit a home run. Okay. Well, seeing someone do it and you hitting it yourself is He ran is, all is... the bases without even standing on one. Wow. He didn't stand on one? He's really good. Wow. Okay. Well, you know what? If you keep practicing, you'll be doing that in no time. But as usual, I have some questions for you about the uh, service, and we're going to see how much you remember from what we learned. All right? All right. All right. So first of all, what did you think of our guest speaker, Nicodemus? Do you remember him? He was the holy priest. Okay, he was a priest. Yeah. What did you think of him, though? Like any any particular, uh, you know, thoughts come to mind, feelings? You know, did you like the way he was talking? Was he a good uh, priest? I think, I think he was, he is like a good man. He's a good like man. Like Jesus. Well, I wouldn't he say that he's be, like Jesus, because that's, that's pretty I know, hard. I know, but he's kind of like Jesus because he's a good man. Okay. I'm just saying that. I know he's a lot higher. Yeah, Jesus is a lot higher, right? And even though he might make he might made a little rough decision, but that didn't sin, and other people think that, mm. that they, he sinned. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sure he did sin. You know, Jesus is the only one who hasn't sinned at all, right? Because he was perfect. But the rest of us, you know, we have our sins here and there. But, you know, you think he still was a pretty good guy, right? Okay. Well, good to know. So next question is a little trickier. What was the Holy of Holies that Nicodemus kept talking about? That they would sacrifice, where they would sacrifice an animal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I believe the, that was part then, of it. So. And then there was, like, mm -hmm. like that golden statue of God. Uh-huh. Ark of the Covenant? Yeah. Yeah. Then, so that was like this uh, big then, container where they put a bunch of important stuff. And then they, and then there was a curtain. And mm -hmm. the, and when Jesus died on the cross, it split open. Uh-huh. Why did it split open? Well, um, God, you know, split it open because that kind of symbolized that we were no longer separated from him because uh, back then, they kind of considered that the Holy of Holies, that was like where God's presence was, right? He was in that, he was in that little area. They tied hit a rope around the, uh -huh. just But you're getting ahead of it. Time. You're getting ahead of it. We're going to get there, okay? Don't okay. don't give away all of the answers yet. Okay, we haven't even got there yet. Kind of spoiled it. It's too smart. All right, kinda next. Kind of spoiled that. Next question for you. Why did Jesus get angry at the temple? Because there were so many birds, and that's not mm -hmm. what the temple was about. It was mm -hmm. about worshiping God. It's a good answer. So they were kind of like taking advantage of people and like maybe charging a little too much or, you know, maybe saying like, oh, if you don't, if you can't buy this one, then your sins won't get forgiven, collector, right? Collect, ta like tax collectors. Mm. Yeah, maybe there were tax collectors who tried to do sacrifices there. And, but, you know, tax collectors still need forgiveness, wouldn't you say? Yeah, but if you don't pay this much, you will, God won't forgive you anymore. Yeah. I got you. So they were being a little judgmental, maybe. Huh? All right. So, it's a good answer. Next question. Uh, what did Jesus mean when he talked about destroying this temple and then that he would rebuild it in three days? What do you think he was talking about there? Like, so when he died on the cross, it said the temple would be replaced in three days, and that and that kind of means like, oh, risen, he risen in three days. That's true, but they didn't even think about that. They were probably thinking that he he was talking about the actual temple, right? 
Yeah. But it, was, it was a, a, the example of that he would have risen in mm-hmm. three days. That's true. That's true. So but then how did they discover the it if they didn't know it? How did they discover what? How, how did they discover it if they didn't even know it? Discover what? That he would risen in three days. Wait, I get it. I think it's because he means like three days and then mm-hmm. he ri- But d- is it including Friday as three days? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, you know, some people would say that, that Jesus uh, probably would have died on Thursday because then he could have been buried like Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday came that back, That makes right? more sense. But for whatever reason, we celebrate Good Friday. Because that's when he died on the cross. Well, that's what I'm saying. He might not have actually died Friday. Maybe it made more sense for him to die like on Thursday, because then it would be three days, right? Then he would be in the in the in the tomb for Friday, Saturday, and then raised on Sunday, right? But anyways, that's 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 for next time discussion. Maybe we'll get more into that. But next question. So what does it mean when Jesus says um, when he talks about being born again? You know, Nicodemus asked him a question about about. Um, you like, know, how, how can he, can he be saved and everything like that? And then Jesus says that he has to be born again. What does he mean? Like risen? Like he was born? Mm-hmm. But how was he born? He was... Yeah, I mean, he wasn't like, obviously we can't be born again from our mother, right? So that would be impossible. There's no way unless we can like go back in and back out. That would be really Unless painful. if there was two. That uh-huh. still wouldn't make sense, but uh-huh. that would be kind of funny. So I think when he says that, uh, talks about being born again. A lot of that goes back to being baptized, because of the symbolism of going under the water, and as an you know a, an old creation. And then when you come out of the water, then you're being reborn. What kind of like reset, like mm-hmm. into, uh, but you still sin. Right? Yeah. And when are we gonna get to that part? To which part? Baptizing. When are we gonna baptized? get to that? Part? Well, I've been baptized. Have you been baptized? All right. I'm well, that means I'm a child. I've only lived for living for seven seven years. I know, but you know a lot for seven years, which is a good thing because a lot of a lot of baptism, as far as we believe, is in order to to be baptized, you should be able to make the the decision for yourself to say, you know, I'm following Christ. This is the decision that I made. I'm proclaiming Him as my Lord and Savior. I'm choosing to, you know, make that that choice, and then. Once you've made that choice, then you can be baptized. So really, it just comes down to when you feel, and then you can obviously always talk to your dad. He can always help you with that. When you feel like, you know what? I think that I'm following Jesus 100%. He's my Lord, and I want to be baptized, right? No matter what, I can be baptized, even when I'm having the really rough time mm-hmm. day of my life. That's true. Jesus will love you even if you have a rough day. Alright, so next question. Why did they tie bells and a rope to the high priest before he would enter the Holy of Holies? Why did they do that? Um, so what? Can they see him in there? Well, no, there was a big, thick curtain. So when something struck, it would wringle, Mm -hmm. and then they would pull him Mm -hmm. if God struck? Yeah, so kind of like if... If the high priest went into the Holy of Holies and maybe he wasn't being too holy or he wasn't ready to go, but he went in anyways, and then God struck him down. and God would never do that. Oh, God would and has done that. Why? Well, we don't have a Holy of Holies anymore, so it's not really the same. Well, at least but, a few. But it was certainly uh, imaginable. But why? Because if they approached God, who is like holy and powerful, but they approached him in a bad way, not ready, not prepared, the way that he told them to be, then God would judge them. Oh, now I get it, because he didn't obey them. Mm-hmm, yep. So if they, if they, you know, what if did he something that go, God didn't want... But would they let, like, a foreigner go in who believed in God? No, the only person allowed in the Holy of Holies was the high priest. Only one person. And then, that's why he would get Wait, the bells the on Wait, the one that... The one that my dad was pretending to be. No, your dad was pretending to be Nicodemus, who was a priest or, or a rabbi, um, but he was not the high priest. So he was kind of like lower down. Like one, mm-hmm. like. Yeah, he high wasn't priest. like 
the, high he wasn't the highest of the high. high. He was still a you know a guy who knew a lot about the laws of God and everything like that and would teach guess. people. This is the priest. Uh huh. High priest. Yeah, high. the high priest was up there, right? So the high priest was the he's, guy who was like he's at like mm. one hundred and this guy's at like one million. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's quite that far apart, but you know. Basically, the guy who was allowed to approach the Holy of Holies and make the special sacrifice over the Ark of the Covenant, right? But they would tie those things to him because in case he got killed, they had to pull him out. Did some, some of them survive? Because God can... Wait, nothing, nothing can kill God, right? Nothing can kill God, no. In the last battle, has the last battle come yet? Which last battle? The last battle of like, Satan. And like in the Revelation, you mean? Yeah. Oh no, that hasn't happened yet. Then how do people know it? Did God has it? Did God tell people? Well, yeah, the whole book of Revelation is where um, it's talking about prophecies, which is like things that haven't happened yet, right? Things that will happen. I mean, not maybe like not the, the whole book of Revelation. Is there gonna be a monster? Well, it does talk about all types of different uh, creatures and but things it, that, did, that were seen in the, visions. Is the monster gonna come? Mm -hmm. I thought that was in the like the end of the last story of the bible well yeah the, it is the last book of the bible but it talks about some things that are going to happen in the future but you're getting off topic okay. we gotta stick with these ones okay hold your we can horses. talk about that once your dad starts talking about revelations which hold your horses new maybe we need that revelation sermon soon so that avery can like get these things but anyways that's for later all right next what did it mean when the curtain tore, separating us from the Holy of Holies? We talked a little bit about that already. You are kind of spoiled it. I know, I kind of spoiled it, but what, what does it mean? It's like, it was like a really thick curtain, uh -huh. so it was like this much. It might have been like this thick. It's like brick. I know, it's a real thick curtain, huh? That's um, why it was so amazing that God tore it, because it's not like it just happened on its own, like... Is it soft? And a human couldn't take it, uh, couldn't tear it, you know, it had to be God. So, it was like something like, so it was a reminder, so it's a reminder of how we're not going to be separated of God. It's showing how we were separated, mm -hmm. but now that we're not separated. So, yeah. But that's why I toured it, to give an example. Exactly. It was but showing it, people that now, more than just the high priest can have a relationship with God in that way, everyone can have access to God. We can all approach Him, right? So that's pretty cool, because people couldn't do that before. How would God, and how did the God struck them? Uh, I don't know. That would be up to God. But that was a good answer. That was a good answer. All right. Last main question here. So, what is your favorite thing about Easter? My favorite thing about Easter is that Jesus rose again. That's the importantest part about Easter. And mm -hmm. is Easter in the importantest um, story? Yeah, Easter is very important, definitely. I thought it was Christmas. Well, Christmas is important too, but it's Christmas cool. is like when Jesus was born, right? That means that he came, and that's great, but he was just a baby then. But Easter is what he came to do. Right? Yeah, Easter is the reason sense. that he was born. That makes so sense. So in a way, that's even more important because it's like fulfilling his job when he came to earth. Well, okay. Right? So your favorite part then is that Jesus rose again so that we could have that relationship. And Good Friday. So we could be forgiven, right? So that we could connect with God. And actually, Brooklyn's birthday was right before Easter. That's a pretty uh -huh. good birthday. That's like two parties in a row. One time, know. I went to an, one party and then another party and then another party. I got went to on in one day and then so I went to one of my mom's friends' parties with the, she has kids mm -hmm. and they really like Pokemon cards. But their sisters don't. Really they really like Pokemon cards, huh? Yeah. They mm -hmm. they gave me a free magic card. But I didn't take it. They gave you a free magic card? It's one of the weakest Pokemon. Yeah, but it, when it evolves, then it becomes strong, right? Gyarados. Yeah. Then what is it? It's a good one. Then and it's like a sea dragon. And then what evolves to Gyarados? Uh, what Gyarados? Gyarados? What do you mean? What does Gyarados evolve into? Yeah. I'm not sure. 
That might be one of those newer Pokemon, and I'm more about the older ones. You know what I mean? Me too. You should know that one better than me. I don't know it. Well, then why are you even here? Huh? What? You need to give people the answers they're looking for about the Gyarados Pokemon evolutions, and I wasn't prepared for that. I don't know them because I got, I got my, po I only, I only get, I only like to collect them and watch it, mm -hmm. but I don't, I've never actually seen what it looks like. All right, well. What is, what is the first evolution of, what, what was the first evolution? Evolution? Yeah. Of who? Of, what, what, what was the first evolution, the evolution before, um, uh, Magikarp. Well, Magikarp is the first e evolution, and then he becomes Gyarados. But anyways, we're getting off topic here. The people came here because they wanted to learn about Easter and about the sermon, right? Yeah. But we, we pretty much covered everything there. We gave a little brief overview, but last question before we close off. What are some words of wisdom that you can share with us, you know, with me, with the people watching online? Something for us to be like, wow, thank you, Avery, for giving us that like a nice word well yeah, like whatever all you guys are good and hopefully we'll see you next week and on wednesday mm -hmm. all right well thank you avery for signing us and, off there and hopefully your kids will have a great time hopefully your kids will have a great time and if you're watching this now please tell your kids that they'll have a great time there because mm -hmm. it's really fun we get to do some crafts Okay. All right. Thank you for encouraging everyone. We appreciate your time there. Avery, thank you again. And we all are hoping that you'll do well in your baseball game. All Hopefully right? we win. Hopefully. We did not beat the other team. We did not beat them very good. You did not beat it was them only very good. It was only 15 to 14. Wow. That was so close. Well, right. let's hope this time that you can beat them good, right? All right, well, thank you guys for tuning in to today's uh, episode of Chats with Lewis and Avery. It's been a pleasure, and have a blessed week.